Hi, welcome to the Oatana Today Show. I'm Shelley Whitehead. Thank you so much for joining us on this Friday. We would like to give a shout out to those companies who stood up and said, you know, we like what you're doing. We want to be a part of that. So we'd like to thank our premier supporters right now. They include the City of Oatana, Express Employment Professionals, Oatana Foundation, Oatana Public Utilities, Safe and Drug Free Coalition of Steele County, and United Way of Steele County. Thank you to each of those. Also, our primary supporters, which include Amy Swain Hearing Centers, Coda Living Community and Park Place Senior Living and Little Theater of Oatana. Of course, we couldn't do this without our interlude supporters. They include Abraham Consulting Technologies, Brenda Bednar Mortgage, Glenn Meager and Tim Thomas of the Brick Meager Funeral Home and Medford Funeral Home, Carlson Branson and Company CPAs, ERA Gillespie Real Estate, Fairview Animal Medical Center, Horizon Eye Care Professionals, Clancher and Son Landscaping and Concrete, Napa Auto Center, Owatonna Business Incubator, Profinium Financial, RNK Electric, Snap Fitness, Steele County Historical Society, Steele County Transitional Housing, The Third Hand Incorporated Video Productions, and TPS Insurance. We hope that you will stop by these companies and let them know you saw us right here on the Owatonna Today Show and thank them for supporting us. Also, if you are a company or know one that would like to support us, we're always looking for new people to join this crazy ride. They can give us a call at 390-5751 and let us know, and Leanne will be glad to tell you the details on that. We are going to have a great show today. We're going to talk about the Christmas bird count, always a fascinating subject. And if you've, been, you've seen the Aldi store but you haven't gone in, you'll have your chance in just a minute. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Jody Voison with the staff at Fairview Animal Medical Center, your other family doctor. Fairview Animal Medical Center is a proud supporter of the Oatana Today Show. If clothing catches fire, stop, drop, and roll. If your clothes catch on fire, do not panic and run. This only fans the fire. Stop where you are, drop to the ground, and roll over and over to smother the flames. Cover your face with your hands to protect your eyes and your throat and lungs from the burns. This has been a safety tip from the Oatana Fire Department. Hi, my name is Dave Olson and I'm with RNK Electric where we provide power to the people. We're proud supporters of the Owatonna Today Show. And we're back with the Owatonna Today Show. We do have with us Daryl Hill and Nels Thompson. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning to you. Um, we're talking today about the Minnesota Christmas <laughs> bird count, and this has been going on since 1905, though I don't think you gentlemen have been involved in it that I long. I was. Were you here? <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, I, what I'd like to do is start off, gentlemen, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself and telling us a little bit about yourself, and then we'll get into the count. We'll start with you. That's good. My name is Daryl Hill, and I was a principal up at the high school, so... Uh, I've been around a few years that way. <laughs> uh, I have several hobbies. Uh, one of them is birds, and that's why I'm, I'm here on this. I play uh, table tennis, so I teach that at Senior Place. And uh, I also work, have worked with the high school museum. Mm. So nice. that, that keeps me busy. Yeah, good. Hi, I'm Nels Thompson. I have been here since 1970. And it uh, wasn't many years after that that Daryl started the Audubon Christmas Count. And I've been a part of those all that while, 42 years now. Mm -hmm. But I did teach at the high school uh, for quite a while and uh, at Riverland Community College as well. And bird watching has been a hobby of mine forever. And uh, I'm a counter for the Cornell people, weekend uh, feeder counts. And I like to do that winter... CBC, they call it? No, no, no. It's a great backyard bird count mm -hmm. in February. And then, of course, this one. Now, what, is this, what is the Christmas bird count? Well, it's something that's uh, sponsored by the National Audubon Society. And most people have heard of the National Audubon Society, I'm sure. Their primary role is to maintain or preserve all sorts of wildlife, but especially birds. They're most noted for birds, and of course they're named after John James Audubon, who is the premier artist in the 1700s, 1800s mm -hmm. for birds. And um, they do that anyway, and, and they sponsor this thing, and it's, 
env uh, encompasses the whole of North America. Hmm. And uh, is there other places? Yeah, there? it's uh, it's uh, Central America and uh, and South yeah, America they too. Do that. So yeah. it has expanded. Well, and so the, what they've done, Daryl, as, as far as I've learned from you gentlemen, is that they have two different kinds of counts that they do. They have a field count and they have a feeder count. Mm -hmm. And um, so we're talking about this today because you're kind of interested in getting more people involved in this count. So mm -hmm. let's talk a little bit. Let's start with the feeder count. Tell us a little bit about what the feeder count is and how people can be a part of that. Okay. Uh, what we want to do is in one day and that's going to be December 14th, we want to, to cover a circle that's 15-mile diameter with Havana as the center. Mm. Draw a circle, 15-mile. And we send out teams or people can count from their homes to see how many birds we can find in one day only. Okay. And then there will be those circles all over Minnesota. I think there are around 68 circles in here, and then they're over Canada, and that's when we're going through all of South America, North America. Mm, okay. So we have all of these all in counting during one day oh. during the Christmas air time. Okay. Our count is just oh, one day. So Ours they is could one be day. different days, but yours is that day. That is correct. Okay. Right. And they have them at, like at Austin, and they have them at Faribault, and they would be other days than what okay. ours is. So, okay. so what we do then, if we can get people in town, counting birds at their feeders, we can then count those birds. Okay. And you know the common ones, the chickadees, the nuthatches, the house finch, the cardinals, and so forth. But if you do that when you have to be careful, you, a chickadee will keep going back and forth. <laughs> They're little. Times. They need to eat a lot throughout the day. <laughs> so if you do that count, you have to count, okay, he, here comes one, uh, two, two of them you see, two of them at a time. Mm -hmm. Now, later on in the day, you see three, and then you see four of them at one time. Mm -hmm. You don't count two, three, and four. Mm -hmm. You count the, the, the count that you saw the most at any one time. So that would be four in that ah, example. So you don't have to count every bird every time. You just say, okay, mm -hmm. I've seen five chickadees at the most mm -hmm. today, mm -hmm. so that's how many chickadees I've seen? Yep. That, okay. That is Basically, yes. Okay. You can have all day to do that. Okay. And what's interesting is that um, there are, so if someone wants to do this, mm -hmm. uh, they, they have a feeder, they love watching birds, mm -hmm. they have time on that day, what do they have to do? Well, just, just let me know, and okay. then you, they can just look throughout the day. Okay. They don't have to sit there. They don't just have to sit there the whole time, no. <laughs> just what they yeah. see throughout the day. So it's not as if you're asking for the most birds they've ever seen. It's just, oh, just no. keep an it's, idea. It's that day. It's yeah. that one day only. Okay. And then um, is there a, a good, because for me, like I said, I, I have some trees outside my house, and so there's a mm -hmm. lot of birds that visit, and I don't know a lot of them. How can I maybe identify what's a quick and easy way for someone at home if they want to do the bird count to identify well, some of you, them? You have to basically know some of the, the common birds. Mm -hmm. That's the ones that you'd most likely see. Mm -hmm. So, And that can help you with those that you'd be most likely to maybe see. Maybe there might be some yeah. uh, resources on the Internet, too, that mm -hmm. people can go to. Now, that's the, that's the feeder count. Now, okay. Nels can maybe talk a little about the... The field count. Yeah, Nils, let's give us an idea. The field count is, you, you said there's the crazy and the more crazy, and the more crazy are the people who love doing the field count. Let's talk a little bit about that. We stay in the car a lot on cold days, <laughs> but, but we, uh, and we keep the heaters up, yeah, and we eat brownies. <laughs> so you're looking for donations for brownies yeah. as well for that day. <laughs> but, um, yeah, we... Daryl identified that we have a seven, seven and a half mile radius or something like that. It's a circle anyway that's divided into quadrants. There's a northeast, northwest, and so on. And uh, the one that I'm in is about a fourth of the whole big circle. Mm -hmm. And there's several of us that drive around uh, in that area looking out all the windows and trying to see things other than snowflakes. And, <laughs> and, uh, and we do pretty well. Sometimes we get... Uh, Big groups, uh, snow buntings, larks, uh, long spurs, and so on, have to do a little estimating. But the rules are pretty much the same. The, the most number of birds we see in an area at one time is the count number. Okay. And if we, well, we don't go back over areas and see them again, but you could, I suppose. Mm -hmm. And if the count got bigger, then you'd include the bigger number. But if the count did not get bigger, then you wouldn't. 
But uh, all of these counts are uh, very important to the Autobahn people because they can take with that little window of time from the 14th of December, which is our count day, mm -hmm. clear through this year, I think it's the 5th of January, mm -hmm. when other communities will count, in, and it, they'll all pick a day. But in that period of time, uh, there's a kind of a snapshot then of where all these birds are on the continent. And mm. it's, it's really pretty useful for managing and, and all kinds of other things that go on relative to the environment. Mm. But um, And so for you, Daryl, what happens is when people, when, he's, when Nels is done, he will give you the number. Mm -hmm. And when you're done, you have the number. And so when people do their backyard <laughs> count, they do that as well. What do you do with that information once you collect all yep. those numbers? Well, I'll, they'll give me the numbers of birds that they see and the time that they... I looked, I watched for four hours oh, okay. or two hours. And on the field, we count how many miles we go. Okay. And, uh, and so then I crunch those numbers and send those into Audubon Society that goes with many, many, many others from all over the, the continents. Mm -hmm. um, but just to give some, some feel... Last year we saw 51 different species of birds. A lot of times people don't realize there are that many in the, in the winter. Why? We think they all go south, yeah. but they don't. They hang out here. No. And uh, we counted 7,052 birds, huh. individual birds. So, you know, that's, that's pretty cool. And so we like to see if, if the population of the blue jay goes up and down and so forth. So. Yeah. I'm curious as to um, why they do this in the winter. Do either of you, are, do you know why they choose to do it wintertime? Yeah. Well, they're pretty seeable, first of all. Uh, that's in the true, summer, yeah. you've got leaves and things, and, and uh, mm. you know, a lot of things they can hide behind mm. and so on. The winter is, is also a time when they're not on territories, where you might only have uh, a couple pairs of birds and say, a square mile. Uh, and the next square mile, you might get a couple more. You can hardly cover all those territories mm. without having way more people. So in the wintertime, they tend to, a lot of them anyway, tend to flock up. So we can count um, hundreds of them in a very small area sometimes. And uh, hmm. it's just a nice way to you know, get a fix on them. Good. Incidentally, it uh, was mentioned before about going south. Many of the birds that we see here have gone south. <laughs> from Canada. But they've come from Canada <laughs> and way up north, yeah. yeah. So we're getting kind of a fix on what we'd call boreal birds that way, too. Okay. They're Darryl, not truly boreal what's your birds. phone number? So if people would like to do this thing, um, you'd be part of it? Yeah, if you'd like to, to join us, uh, my number is 451-5073. Give them a call. And just give me a call and I'll, we'll... We'll tell you more about it. And again, it. like you said, it's super easy. Sit in your couch. Leanne does it. She has hot chocolate. She likes it. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Appreciate your time, and good luck with your count. Thank you very much. All right. Thank we'll you. be right back. Please stay with us. Hi, my name is Dave Efforts with TPS Insurance. We're here to handle all your insurance needs. We are a very proud supporter of the Otana Today Show. I didn't just want another job. I wanted a career, so I expressed myself. I was new to town, and I didn't know where to turn for a job, so I decided to express myself. I decided to express myself, and they helped find the right career for me. Express Employment Professionals is in contact with thousands of companies in need of quality employees. Come in now and get the job you deserve. Express yourself today. The Otana Foundation's mission is to support community progress, and the Foundation has been doing just that since 1958 in the Otana community. By issuing over $11 million in grants, the Otana Foundation has helped organizations fulfill their goals in the areas of community, recreation, the arts, and education. Please consider a tax-deductible donation, a memorial, or possibly including the Foundation in your estate planning so that together we can continue to make a positive, lasting impact in our community. Preserving the past, building the present, funding the future, that is what your Oatana Foundation is all about. Hi, I'm Doug Johnson with the Oatana Business Incubator. We're here to help small businesses start and to grow. We're a proud sponsor of the Oatana Today Show. Hi, I'm Ron Clancher with Clancher and Sun Landscaping and Concrete. We support the Oatana Today Show and so should you. United Way of Steele County is all about seniors living with purpose and dignity. Building a community of giving. Children have a healthy start in life. 
youth achieve their potential. Bringing neighbors together. Investing in education, income, and health. Please join us and all Jastin's employees by giving generously, advocating for a better quality of life, and volunteering your time to a partner agency. We all win when we live united. And we are back with the Owatonna Today Show. We are actually here at the new Aldi's. You have seen it being built over the year. The I guess how long has it been? This is Lindsay. She actually is in charge here. Lindsay, how long has it, have you been building this building? Um, well, we have had plans for years to okay. come here. Um, and we just opened up on October 24th. So it's just brand new, and you've seen it, you haven't come in yet. Well, now's your chance to come in, take a peek, see what's going on here. What is this new building? You know, we have, there are a couple Aldi's in the area, but this is kind of a new company to Southern Minnesota. So tell me a little bit about Aldi's. Yeah, definitely. Well, we, um, first op we opened our first store in 1961 in Mielheim, Germany. Mm -hmm and our first U.S. store in 1976 in southeastern Iowa. In um, Iowa, okay. Iowa, yes. So interesting from Germany to Iowa, right. quite a change. Yes, yeah. definitely. Um, and really we're all about um, our, a lot of, we carry a lot of our own brands, mm -hmm. um, our exclusive Aldi branded product, and they're um, very great quality at everyday low prices. So yeah. we really pride ourselves on that quality and low price. And so you really want customers. people to come in, try that Aldi brand. If you're used to something that you've used a lot, why not come in and try it, it doesn't hurt and then see what you might find. So you might be surprised by the quality you'll absolutely, get. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And we really are excited that we can pass on a lot of savings to our shoppers. Um, if they're a traditional supermarket shopper mm -hmm. and they buy name brands, they can save up to 50%. Wow, that is a really good bill. deal. Mm -hmm. And so what are some unique items they might find here where they may not find at another place? Yeah, um, we carry um, some of our own chocolates mm -hmm. here that are very, <laughs> very delicious yes. um, and great. Um, we have, again, a lot of our own private label uh, branded products, mm -hmm. a lot of them that you'll find in the um, bigger supermarkets, more traditional supermarkets, but we only carry roughly 1,400 okay. of those fast fastest selling products that you'll find there. So there's a lot of turnover in some of your products exactly. here. Exactly. Okay, and so it kind of has a feel of one of those places where you need to come in more often than just once or twice, a w once a week. You kind of come in a couple times throughout the week, see what's happening. Do things change that quickly here at Aldi? Um, they do change weekly, weekly, definitely. Yes, so to complement our grocery products, we also carry some non-food and food special buys, we call okay. them. So every week we get them in um, on a limited quantity basis, mm -hmm. but we're highlighting and and bringing in some just exciting and fun products that maybe necessarily aren't grocery or if they are they're not a core item that we carry mm. but it's a pretty exciting thing just because weekly it's it's sort of like a little surprise for the customer actually <laughs> well that's what I like and then also um, especially with the holidays coming up you might be able to pick up some fun unique gifts here that you may not be able to get somewhere else exactly good right. well what I want to do is one of the things Aldi's very proud of is their produce section yes, so let's go take a look I was taking a peek back there it seems like a lot let's go check yeah, it out sounds great we'll be right back And we're back with lots and lots of vegetables. <laughs> um, you, this is like a vegetarian's dream right here with all these wonderful things. Tell me about the freshness and what people can expect when they come and get the, their veget vegetables and fruits from Aldi. Yeah, well, we're really excited about our fresh produce that we offer. Um, over the years, we've increased our fresh produce offerings, both uh, fruits and vegetables that we're standing um, at here. So we carry up to 70 different varieties of fruits and vegetables wow. weekly. And um, we, we partner with a lot of the top growers, um, top national and local growers around the country. And that really helps us um, make sure that we select produce that is at the peak of its freshness. Mm -hmm. And we bring it in often um, for our customers at obviously really great retails. I noticed that a lot of them are shrink wrapped. Is that to help yes. with the freshness instead of just throwing it in a bag yeah, kind of that's, thing? Yeah, that's one thing. We yeah. also um, don't price um, we don't weigh our produce at the register. So okay. basically every um, piece of produce is uh, packaged and priced by unit Okay. Um, for the most part and sold that way. It just allows us, again, from a, um, an efficiency standpoint to reduce costs um, and help um, with that side of, of the business to streamline. Good. Well, well, of course, we just had someone obviously shopping the produce, and that's what you want people to <laughs> right, do right. is come and check it out. I can actually smell the peppers. It's kind yeah, of making my mouth water a little. And then, so we do have, well, how many, um, you have a wide variety of fruit on the other side right. of here. I see, I see pineapples. Yes. That's really a lot of fun to have people to come and, and kind of, you can actually make your holiday meal a little bit more festive with some of the choices you have here. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. You will find the most popular products uh, in the most popular sizes as well, pack sizes, variety 
Lee, et cetera, um, we carry here. Also in our produce section, similar to the core range items that we carry, yeah. um, we carry some of the fastest selling. So you don't have to buy 80 peppers. Right. <laughs> you exactly. can get the three that you really need right. and go from there. And then what I love is over here, you know, you were talking a little bit how you have some non-grocery items. And this is what we have over here. Talk to me a little bit about some of the buys that we have over here. Yes, yeah. So again, to complement um, the grocery products that we do carry, we do offer special buys. Um, this is the non-food section of the special buy section. And you can see that we carry a lot of just various kitchen products. Um, these are products that... Our, um, our again, our our own private label. Okay. Um, rigorously taste test, not taste taste <laughs> tested on the food side. Yes. But then also um, on the non food side, you know, we're testing the product, yeah. make sure it's functional yeah. and it's and beautiful. Just, again, at yeah. really great retails in yes. comparison to what you'd find at the traditional retail store. Well, and I, you have everything from the convention oven exactly. to just um, some baking tins. Got some baking tins yep. for two ninety nine. Great. And Great then deal. even over on this side, you have some luggage. Yes. So it's kind of one of those things, like you said, you never know what you're going to find when you walk into right. Aldi. And so it's worth coming in once a week at least, checking Absolutely. to see what's happening. And then I love, on the other side, you, it's full of toys. Right. Christmas is right around the corner, and you might be able to find some toys here that maybe that might not get somewhere else. Exactly. Yeah, so it's a good opportunity. Um, Aldi's is a little different. We talked about this is very different. You having this amazing produce is different, but you also have a very European feel to the way people shop. Let's talk right. a little bit about that yes. and how uh, when they first come in, they may grab that cart and they'll notice something a little different. Yeah, definitely. One of the ways that we're able to pass on um, the savings to our customers in the form of lower prices is because of the cost efficiencies that we built into our um, our uh, store. So basically. Um, a couple of unique things to us that customers will find if they've never shopped us before are our cart rental system. Um, so in order to keep the um, cost down of having to, whether it's, you know, go and get a, a cart from the uh, parking lot or, you know, the liability of the cart venting uh, the cars yep. if it's not put back in the corral, um, we... Uh, Customers just have to bring a quarter, mm -hmm. and they rent the cart. Yeah, they just unlock it from the outside. Kids love doing this, by they the way. My my love kids it. love it, and then sometimes you get an extra quarter if yes. somebody didn't get theirs back. The kids love this, so it's actually kind of a little game for the kids too. They exactly. love that kind of whole thing. And then um, also, you encourage people to bring their own bags. Right, we do. We do sell bags. We just we just want to give the customer the option, mm -hmm. um, so that we don't um, include pr the price of bags or hide the price of bags mm -hmm. in the pro the price of their products. Um, and so we do encourage um, our customers. It's, it's very trendy today. It's very <laughs> yeah. green yes. and, and you know eco-friendly. And we really do encourage customers to bring their own. And can assure you that we're not making money on, our, on, on the bags that we sell. Um, but we do offer them, just in case you would forget, mm -hmm. um, that they can be purchased um, here at the checkout. Is there any other interesting things that people will find along those? Or just other than that, it's just a regular shopping experience? Yeah, I think the, the last thing that's really important to mention to a new customer would be that we we do take um, only cash and debit cards or EBT as well mm -hmm. um, because of the handling fees for credit cards and checks. Um, we do avoid um, taking those forms of payment. So when you come in, just make sure you either have some cash right. or you do have uh, the debit, debit card, card, which, again, there's no charge for the debit right. card. So exactly. So good. Well, I think this has been fun. What, is there another area that we want to go look at? Well, we might as well check out the front end and the register. I love that. Let's go do that. that. We'll be right back. Stay with Great. us. So we're now at the registers and our tour of Aldi, and we're, I love that you've kind of made a lot easier for those people working for you as well. Tell me a little bit about this new setup that you have to us, this new right. setup. Right. Well, um, like we talked about earlier, we build we built in a lot of cost um, efficiencies to uh, Aldi and the store here, and this is one of the ways that we've also done this. We, um, we do give our cashiers the opportunity to sit down. Um, it's more ergonomically friendly in the long run with all of the scanning that they're doing of the groceries. Um, it just helps you know, them to more ergonomically and physically handle the product better, easier, um, and just long term is great for them. What hours do are, does all these open if people want to come yes, visit? Yes, absolutely. We're open Monday through Saturday, okay. 9 a.m. to 8 p.m., and then on Sunday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. So come in, check it out, see what it's like. If you've never, you've never experienced anything like this, I think, down in southern Minnesota at all, and it's a great opportunity to uh, save some money on absolutely. some products you know and maybe try some new products and save even more money. Exactly. That sounds like a great opportunity. And get a little taste of Europe while you're here. Try the chocolate. Yes. Trust me, it's really good. Thank you so much for you're your time welcome. today. I really appreciate it. All right. Thanks. We will be right back. Please stay with us. Oatana Today Show.
Hi, Warren Abraham, Abraham Consulting Technologies, your one-stop technology shop. We support the Otana Today Show. And it's time for a look at your community announcements. I want to remind you that Toys for Tots is looking for your donations. So make sure when you are out and about, get those toys and drop them off. New toys that are unwrapped, put them in those boxes and help make a child's Christmas a little bit brighter. And tomorrow is Shop with Santa. It's from 8 to noon at St. John's Lutheran Church. It does open at 7 a.m. because there's a lineup that you can begin. Beverages and donuts are available for purchase. And uh, the kids actually get a chance to, the 4-H kids help the younger kids walk through the event and get great presents for family and friends at a very inexpensive price. That 6th grade and younger are welcome to Shop with Santa tomorrow at St. John's from 8 to noon. And the steals are this Saturday, or sorry, Saturday, December 14th at 7.30. Doors do open at 6.15 at Trinity Lutheran Church Fellowship Hall. Tickets are $15. Uh, there is a limited a number. These are an incredible harmony a group that uh, are nationally renowned and Grammy Award winning artists from the Twin Cities. So enjoy your Christmas holidays with beautiful music from the Steels. Steele County Historical Society is seeking copies of the Owatonna Photo News from 1950 through 53 because they'd like to uh, use them as a resource for the upcoming Korean War exhibit at the History Center. The Photo News has been a great re resource, so they're hoping to get a few more of the copies from the early 50s. They can be scanned and returned so you can keep these copies, but they just need them for the pictures themselves. The Owatonna Elks local competition for the annual Elks Hoop Shoot, the National Free, sh three, free Throw Shooting Contest for kids 8 through 13 will be held at the Owatonna Junior High School Auditorium January 4th. Registration is at 1215. And if you want more information, you can contact the Owatonna Elks, Elks Lodge, and it'll be a great opportunity to have some fun. Join us next week when we are going to be talking with the Owatonna Foundation and United Way campaign. Meanwhile, please have a great and safe weekend. Thanks for joining us.